All right, some general rules for this tier list. Number one, I'm not including every single hybrid imaginable. I'm leaving out styles like blackened death metal, blackened thrash metal, blackened doom metal, blackened death core, etc. Blackened chicken fettuccine Alfredo is absolutely one of my favorite genders. Mmm, delicious. But including these hybrid genres would add about another 200 genres and add very little substance to this video. So no death doom, prog thrash, new metal core, or stuff like that, with a couple rare exceptions. 2. I'm limiting folk metal to one genre. I'm not making a new subgenre for every single group of people around the world and every new flute or set of bongo drums that differs from nation to nation and tribe to tribe. When I say folk metal, I refer to mainly Celtic slash Norse type music. I know this is a bit Eurocentric of me, but it ties into rule 3. 3. It has to be more than just one or two bands. So nothing like ska metal or country metal. I don't think these styles have been done enough to really be considered genres. Maybe in the future they will be, but right now, not really. They are more odd curiosities. They haphazardly combine two genres, but don't exactly create anything new in the process. So I'm disqualifying these weird niche offshoots. Four. Not including every single damn fusion with electronic music. I included the main ones, but there are a lot of electronic music genres, almost enough to rival metal ones. This is sort of just a clarification of rule 3, but I don't want to see anyone complaining about me missing house metal or some crap like that. 5. Not including hardcore genres unless they are metal adjacent. Maybe I missed a couple that could be considered metalish, but I think I covered most of them. 6. I'm not including ideological or religious genres, like Christian metal or red and black anarchist black metal. As far as I can see, anything from glam metal to metalcore can be Christian, so it doesn't make sense to me to include it as a distinct genre. And also, whether it's fashy black metal or commie black metal or enlightened centrist grindcore, these are all just lyrical themes. Same with pirate metal for that matter. The genre actually has to have a distinct sound, not just a different lyrical theme. 7. There are a couple of genres on here that I technically made up. As in, if you googled them, the only thing you'd find is, well, me. But I'm not manifesting genres out of the ether here. I'm simply giving names to styles that already exist, yet for some reason don't have a name yet. I'll defend doing this, as every genre name has been coined by someone at some point, and I believe I have possibly achieved this already with Occult Metal, which I could not find anything about online prior to my Gothic Metal video. But since I've thrown the term out there, I have seen it mentioned in an article on metal genres. Can't say for sure that it can be traced back to me, but all I know is that nobody was talking about Occult cult metal three years ago, and now people are. So maybe in time, it'll be the same with something like metal and roll. Finally, 8. This is a metal tier list. Some genres on here may have ranked higher if this was a rock tier list. If you are primarily a rock fan, chances are I have just ranked all of your favorite styles as mid. Just warning you. So that covers my disqualifications, and even with those rules in place, I still ended up with 75 genres. Obviously, this is my subjective opinion, as I am obligated to state. Don't take it personally, yada yada yada. Here's what each ranking means to me, by the way. S tier means the genre is iconically metal, something that is likely a good gateway genre, but still goes hard, even for metal veterans. These are genres where if you picked a random song by a random artist, 9 out of 10 times, you would get a good song. A tier means the genre is still great, but might have some quirks that prevent it from being iconically metal. Might be a little too weird or extreme. In some ways, this is the coolest tier, but maybe a little more niche or might more frequently pick an awkward tune if a random song from these genres were chosen. B tier means the music is still good, but may not be cool enough for A tier. Maybe these styles have some hidden gems, but are lacking broadly speaking. Or they are good, but a tad overrated. Or they are considered average, but are a little better than people give credit. Solid genres that are neither amazing nor mediocre. C tier means the genre is mid. This could be because it's generic radio metal or really dull extreme metal. Bands of these genres tend to be carbon copies of one another, and the average song of one of these styles is rather uninteresting. 
D tier means the music is awful, bad on even a conceptual level. These are styles where if you played 10 random songs, 9 out of 10 of them would be bad. But there still may be a good track hidden deep somewhere if you are lucky. F tier means the genre is irredeemable. If you played 10 random songs, 10 out of 10 would be bad. These are genres that should not even exist. Are you ready? Alternative metal. This is what most people really mean when they refer to new metal. It is one of the genres that defined metal in the early 2000s. It is a very versatile genre and can be mixed with many other styles. It's rather catchy, but still fairly heavy, unlike other mainstream genres such as glam metal. It's a good gateway genre if nothing else, but it's one I always come back to. It includes everything from System of a Down to Slipknot to Evanescence. Such a varied genre with so many bangers. I can't give it any less than S tier. Groove metal is the definitive metal genre. Pantera best demonstrates the style. It's riffs after riffs. It's a good middle ground between mainstream metal styles and extreme ones. It's rather underrated as far as the recognition it gets, often just getting lumped in with thrash metal. But the presence of groove metal is definitely felt in the metal scene. I think it deserves an S tier. It's just metal incarnate. It just crushes. Oh, and obligatory mention of prong. Melodic metalcore is awesome. I don't care what anyone says. I know metalcore gets a bad rap, but this stuff is the bomb. I love the juxtaposition between clean vocals and screams, and melodic metalcore does this the best, even if the genre is a bit by the numbers at times. I think melodic metalcore is best when it's mixed with other styles such as melodic death metal or prog metal. It's very versatile and can be blended with most other genres. I think that makes it an S tier. If you can get past the idea that metal has to be 100% macho all the time, melodic metalcore is phenomenal. Melodic death metal is also awesome. It doesn't have the negative stigma that melodic metalcore has, since there is little to no clean vocals. However, melodic death metal is just as perfect, combining the harshness of death metal with fantastic melodies. It just goes together well. It has an atmosphere that is simply unmatched, and it can be combined with many other styles to create unique hybrids. It is absolutely an S-tier genre, if there ever was one. Metal and Roll Metal and Roll is hard rock and metal combined. Everything from Alice in Chains to Avenged Sevenfold can fall into this category. I love this style, even if many just refer to these bands as broadly hard rock or heavy metal. I think Metal and Roll is its own style and highly underrated. Even Metallica and Megadeth ventured into this sound in the 90s. It's a super fun genre. Much like alt metal, it is a great gateway genre into metal, and features some of my all-time favorite music. Perhaps we could call it metallic hard rock, or something like that, if that name would stick better. But it is absolutely its own sound. S tier, in my opinion. Prog metal is a double S tier for me. but I'll consider it a simple S tier for simplicity's sake. It can be fused with any metal style from power metal to death metal, and it always enhances things. It adds much appreciated complexity and contrast. While many prog metal fans may be annoying, it doesn't change the fact that the style is awesome. And many metal bands like Death and Metallica, who most people tend to not think of as prog metal, absolutely are influenced by it. And this is definitely a factor to take into consideration. Prog metal is at least S tier. No debate. Best genre ever. Try and fight me on it. Sludge metal. Sludge metal is overlooked, but legendary. Very versatile genre. 
can be combined with both mainstream artists and esoteric albums alike. It has an angst and power that is undeniable. Maybe it's a little outdated as an artifact of the 90s and early 2000s, but I believe in sludge supremacy. And with popular metal artists such as Metallica, Pantera, and Alice in Chains all venturing into sludge metal territory, I think sludge metal's influence in metal is quite underrated. S tier for sure. Thrash metal is kind of a given. Thrash metal is kind of a given for S tier. I initially considered only giving it an A tier rank since the genre is oversaturated with mid bands and it is a much overdone style. But thrash metal is the iconic metal genre. With artists like Metallica and Megadeth, it deserves an S tier for them alone. When thrash metal is done right, it's perfect, and it's far too iconic to give a rank any lower than S. Deathcore is an A rank. It is tempting to give Deathcore an S rank, as it is quite a versatile genre, and has quite a punch to it. However, the general criticism of Deathcore is that it has too much guitar chugging, too often strumming of the same notes. This is a little boring, especially to those who play guitar. It is a cheap trick. As a vocalist, I like Deathcore a lot, as it has more vocal variety, but instrumentally, it can be a bit dull at times. And for that, I cannot give it an S ranking. This gimmick diminishes the style a bit, as much as I love the genre. Great, but not perfect. A++ when blended with other styles. Death and Roll Death and Roll is rather unheard of compared to Deathcore, but I enjoy the style a lot. I don't think it quite deserves S tier, because it was pretty much exclusively a 90s genre, and it's not super versatile, besides a couple of bands that mix it with melodic death metal. Death and Roll doesn't really mix well with other genres, and the style basically died with the turn of the century. The only Death and Roll band that gets any recognition post-2000 is Six Feet Under, and to be honest, they are not that great. But Death and Roll has such a punch to it, and I love it for that. Gorefest is one of the best of the genre. I hope that Death and Roll has a resurgence at some point. Gent. Gent, or Da Gent. I like to alternate between both pronunciations just to mess with everybody. But it is a genre, contrary to popular opinion. I am lumping both the Meshuggah sound and the periphery-esque Gent core sound as one thing. And I love both styles. The genre is a little bit niche, which I think prevents an S tier rank, but it has an amazing groove to it. It has a vibrant rhythm, which sticks out even amongst other metal genres. It has a rich quality to it that's rather jazzy, but it sounds amazing. It might be too dissonant to some people, but it is an A plus for me. <laughs> Depressive black metal. Depressive black metal, depressive suicidal black metal, or simply DSBM, is an interesting one. Some of my favorites of the style, like Forgotten Tomb and Shining, are sometimes considered to be more blackened doom metal rather than DSBM. So maybe I don't fully understand the genre. But since I'm not including blackened doom metal in this list, and these bands still have themes of suicide and a similar atmosphere, I am going to lump it together. I like the raw emotion of this style. I cannot give it an S tier, since it is too emotional to listen to on a regular basis. Compared to something like groove metal or mellow death, I have to be in a particular mood to vibe with DSBM. It is intense stuff. Downtempo Deathcore is heavy stuff. It's Deathcore turned up a notch, or rather, turned down a notch, really. It is even Doom Metal inspired. It is so slow that the breakdowns leave you feeling like the song finished, even when the breakdown just began. It is brutal stuff, and I adore it, but it can be rather one note, literally and figuratively. Just listen to Black Tongue's The Unconquerable Dark. That is all you need. Six, three, 
Epic Doom is fantastical. It adds a power metal vibe to Doom that is better than the sum of its parts. Candlemass embodies the style. I love it, but there is not a lot of the style out there. It has a romantic, pre-modern quality, but can be a bit of a bummer at times. I had a friend once ruin a party by playing Solitude and killing the vibe. I think that A tier is fair. It is my favorite Doom metal subgenre. Entombed Core is a rather obscure one. Not a genre that is referred to often by name, but I think it is quite distinct and quite good. Basically takes the Swedish death metal and death and roll sound and combines it with hardcore or crust, producing raw, anarchistic tunes. Black Breath is the best of Entombed Core. Underrated genre of the 2010s. A tier for sure. A bit obscure, but hits hard. Grunge. Grunge is often not considered a metal genre, but I think it's at least a little bit metal, especially with bands like Alice in Chains and Soundgarden, who are undeniably metal. I can't really give it an S tier because it's considered more of a rock genre, and it died as a style after the 90s were over. Grunge doesn't really exist these days. It came and went with a bang. Solid A tier for sure. Despite being short-lived, those Seattle Titans have stuck with people. Gothic metal is a hard one to define, but rarely disappoints. Typo Negative and Theater of Tragedy are quite a bit different, but both solid. The gloomy atmosphere and crunchy riffs are unmatched. It may be a little too sad and too horny at times, but that's part of its appeal. I think that A tier is fitting. Versatile genre too. One of those styles I've listened to a bunch, yet feel like I still don't know enough about. Industrial metal is an iconic style. While it fits the industrial world, I think what prevents it from S tier is just the fact that it's too repetitive. There is a lot of copy paste going on in industrial metal. Despite this, it's banging and deserves at least A tier. The abrasive electronic noises suit metal perfectly and the prefix industrial can be added to pretty much any metal genre. Maximum versatility. <music> Melodic black metal is quite underrated. My favorite black metal subgenre. However, I can't rank it as high as melodic death metal or even melodic metalcore, since it's not as versatile and is a bit static as a style. I still highly recommend it as it goes pretty hard at times. It has a weight to it that other black metal doesn't quite achieve in my opinion. A tier for sure, Faustian excellence. There are some fantastic melodic black metal bands like Watain but it pales in comparison to the amount of melodic death metal bands there are, so I gotta give it an A tier. <laughs> Mathcore is a love it or hate it type thing. It is far too messy to give an S tier, but I am in the love it camp, so A tier it is. Dillinger Escape Plan is definitely the best the genre has to offer, but even outside them, it's still pretty cool. It's a chaotic, glitchy style that is unlistenable even to many metalheads, but when executed well, is a mind-blowing experience. I'm a contrarian, I know. <laughs> New Metal And I mean real new metal. That raw sound that Korn employs. I have always loved it. In some ways, maybe it's better than alt metal, but new metal can get into pretty disturbing territory. As I define S tier as genres that are inherently listenable, that boots new metal down to A tier. Much like DSBM, it can make the listener uncomfortable, but instead of suicide, it usually revolves around childhood trauma or sexual abuse. 
I respect new metal for daring to touch dark, controversial topics, but if S tier means always good for listening, new metal may not always apply. A tier with respect. Old school death metal is obviously classic. I much prefer Swedish death metal over the Florida variety, minus death themselves of course, but a great style nonetheless. Death metal is infamous for good reason, but I think that the childish shock value lyrics and repetitive thrashy riffs make it not quite worthy of S tier. A tier seems right to me. This is not me hating on old school death metal by any means, but compared to melodic death metal, it's just not that versatile. Old school death metal can reach great heights, but can also be a bit too samey for my taste. I know that the elitists will hate me for saying this, but old school death metal is a tad overrated. That said, A tier is where all the cool genres are anyways. S tier is more for normie stuff. Symphonic metal is epic. Adding symphonic elements to any metal style makes it that much more legendary. Orchestral backing fits remarkably well with metal, and even operatic vocals can sound nice as juxtaposition. As much as I adore symphonic metal, there is a law of diminishing returns with how epic something can sound. Especially if it's a long album, the epicness can start to wear off after a while. But it is still amazing and definite A tier. Classy stuff for sophisticated metalheads who wear monocles. Technical thrash metal is cool. It's not often distinguished from normal thrash metal, but it's different, and even Megadeth embodies elements of it. It's varied, both vocally and instrumentally, and has an interesting psychological theme. It is a somewhat niche genre, and didn't live much past the early 90s, but absolute A tier in my opinion. I feel like I want to get into it more. Technical death metal is fun stuff. <laughs> Wacky sci-fi horror. It's overcomplicated instrumental wankery is quite enjoyable for me. If that weren't too alienating for people, and it lacked some of the cringe associated with the genre, it'd be a shoe in for S tier. But A tier seems reasonable to me. I love the alien pinball machine noises. And next to Mellow Death, it's hands down the most versatile death metal offshoot. Trad Doom. Trad Doom, or traditional doom metal, or just doom metal, is the original metal genre. It may be considered a sin to give this any less than S tier, as Black Sabbath practically invented metal itself. But Trad Doom is a rather simple genre. Not a ton of bands play it and the bands that do exist are usually just Sabbath ripoffs. Sabbath may be the GOAT, but they cannot single-handedly give the style an automatic S tier. A tier seems fair to me. Even if by today's standards, Trad Doom seems to be more like a rock genre, its influence cannot be overlooked. Ambient Black Metal Ambient black metal has a cold atmosphere. Burzum is the emblematic artist of the style. Despite its dark quality, it has a strangely soothing effect. Ambient music isn't typically my go-to, so B tier is appropriate. Cool, but not my favorite. I don't have much to say about this one. Black metal. Black Metal itself. Black Metal itself is a tad bit overrated. Hot take, I know. I tend to prefer melodic black metal over the Bathories and Mayhems of the world, as much as I do enjoy those. And I really don't care for the likes of Venom. And I know it's not cool to admit that. 
How dare I say I'd rather listen to Dimmu Borgir than some guy coughing over a badly recorded motorhead riff. Plain ol' regular black metal doesn't really cut it for me. I still enjoy it enough to give it a B tier. It's still cool, but definitely not a favorite of mine. Black Gaze. Black Gaze is somewhat of a fad. It was really popular in the 2010s and is often associated with hipsters. It's a combination of black metal and shoegaze, which believe it or not, is an ethereal offshoot of alternative rock rather than a foot fetish term. Black Gaze seems to have fallen out of popularity, and the people who were talking about how profound these bands were in 2015 seem to have completely forgotten the style existed. I kind of like the contrast of the style though. I might be the only one still listening to these artists a decade later, but it's not bad. Not great, but not bad. B tier. <laughs> Brutal Thrash. Brutal Thrash is a mix of death metal and thrash metal, but it is not simply death thrash. It is its own thing. Not a lot of bands play the style, and it is a bit samey after a while, much like regular thrash or death metal, but it has a cool vibe to it. Demolition Hammer sums it up. Solid B tier. Good stuff. <laughs> Funk Metal is Goofy. But it is fun. Fun enough to be above average. Awkward, yet accessible enough. The go-to genre of every ENTP I've ever met for some reason. I prefer it when it's blended with other styles, and it's fairly versatile, but I can't give it higher than a B. Catchy and enjoyable, but not a lot of substance in my opinion. Might be S tier to some, and F tier to others, but it's in the middle for me. Folk metal. Folk metal is, uh, I love Elevati, one of my favorite bands, but most folk metal is not like them. Folk metal is often just drinking music. It's as if it's country music for pagans. Guys in animal hides making songs about vodka doesn't really cut it for me. I guess I'm just allergic to fun, but it is kind of boring, so B tier is generous. Elevati is goaded though. Gore grind is something. It's grindcore meets death metal, but it is clearly distinct from death grind. Most known for its pitch shifter vocals and medically descriptive lyrics. B tier is likely generous, as there are not a lot of bands in the genre, but it has a truly gnarly sound that I can appreciate. Exhumed just sounds vicious. I gotta respect its disgusting vocals and groovy riffs. Heavy Metal And by this, I mean the new wave of British heavy metal sound. Bands like Judas Priest, Iron Maiden, and Diamond Head. Boomer Metal at its finest. The three bands I mentioned here are classics, obviously, but the genre as a whole is meh. I can do without most of it. It would be a crime to give it lower than B, but I have a hard time justifying a higher rank. When it slays, it slaps hard, but a lot of the bands of this style are rather mediocre. It's very much influenced by punk rock and hard rock. While some bands like Maiden may take the style in a more proggy direction, most new wave of British heavy metal bands are just heavier rock and roll for the most part. Which is fine, nothing wrong with that. It's fun music to wear sunglasses and cruise around to, but it's neither super brutal nor thematically intriguing. It's just fun rock music that makes you feel cool. Solid B tier. Hyperpop. Maybe it's quite silly to put this on here, but I made a video on it, and some bands like 100 Gex, Poppy, and even Avenged Sevenfold on one album seamlessly blend hyperpop and metal, so screw it. And hyperpop truly is a genre that blurs genre lines. Obviously most of the genre is not metal and is pretty openly gay, but I do like it, even if it's a bit of a guilty pleasure. 
Plus, I find that the artists that I listed here are far more enjoyable than the likes of Sleep Token and Bad Omens, who are basically mixing metal and pop anyways. Hyperpop really blurs genre lines, and is much more interesting than most music these days. So, solid B tier. Incel Core. DVD and ecstasy conceded with our self esteem. Again, a bit of a meme, but I made a video on this as well, and the style flirts with grunge, metalcore, and even black metal at times, so it counts. There's a fantastic generational angst here, fused together with chronically online internet humor. It's edgy at times, sure, but pretty funny, and has genuine emotion to it. There's something funny about including both incel core and hyperpop on the same tier. They are very different, yet oh so similar. Most notably, they both have intentionally awful production quality, and are rather meme-like. Incel Core will likely date horribly, but it is fun and a great representation of the present. I'm giving it a B tier. Tier B Lifetime Supply Metallic Hardcore Metallic Hardcore is alright. It's a little samey, and not quite as good as Melodic Metalcore or Deathcore, but I can definitely enjoy some Hatebreed from time to time. This was the original Metalcore sound, and boy has it sure changed a lot since the 90s. This sound is cool, but not S or A tier material. A lot of these bands have terrible production, and are just Pantera ripoffs with more breakdowns and preachy messages. But Hatebreed is awesome, so I'll give it B tier. Metal Step This is Metal plus Dubstep. Metal Step never really had mainstream success outside of Korn venturing into this style on their 2011 album, Path of Totality. The genre seems to mainly consist of remixes. If you attempt to look up Metal Step, you'll probably find dubstep remixes of Disturbed and Five Finger Death Punch far more often than actual original material, which is a shame, since I think this offshoot has a lot of potential, like to the level of industrial metal even. Unfortunately, dubstep's time in the spotlight makes disco look like it had longevity and staying power. Dubstep is a well-hated genre, and therefore any attempt at a fusion with metal was viewed as tacky, and therefore few tried it. But if you want another example besides Korn, Beyond All Recognition did a pretty cool fusion of deathcore and dubstep on their album Drop Equals Dead, a genre with untapped potential. B tier. Neoclassical Metal Honestly, this is a definite not-for-me genre, since it is overwhelmingly instrumental, and I'm not a big fan of instrumentals. However, despite my bias in favor of vocal-driven music, neoclassical metal is not bad. It is basically just classical music, but played with metal guitars. Think of, you know, someone playing a metal version of Beethoven or something. That's neoclassical metal. It typically has a sound similar to the new wave of British heavy metal bands, but with much more technicality, since classical is rather intricate and complex music. Vocals are rare, and this is one of the few metal genres where instead of a band name, the artist will usually just use his own name, as this genre is mostly about flaunting your guitar virtuosity above all else. Yingwi Momstein is the definitive artist of the genre. B tier. Neo Crust. So this is essentially melodic crust punk, or post crust, however you prefer to think about it. I have not delved super deep into this style, but I definitely prefer it over normal crust punk. This is not surprising, since I love the melodic metal genres, so this is just a more punk rock inspired variant of that, and I kinda dig it. It's a vibe, so I'll give it a B tier. Have you ever heard of tragedy? <laughs> I thought not. Neo crust is not a genre the elitists would tell you about. <laughs> Occult Metal I am 
Occult metal is a sort of retro throwback genre. Ghost is the definitive, or at least the most well-known, of occult metal. But a couple others are In Solitude and Lucifer. Occult metal is reminiscent of Blue Oyster Cult and Merciful Fate, but with a modern twist. Well, sort of. Theoretically, these bands could have existed in 1983, and they wouldn't have seemed that out of place. It's just doom metal slash proto metal with a gothic twist, and a touch of black metal. Technically not anything new, but a unique remix of older styles that previously hadn't been done that much. I like it. This is the last Power metal. Gotta be honest, I've never been the biggest fan. I think my favorite band of the style is Unleash the Archers, and they are not your typical power metal band by any means. I can dig some Man of War and all that pre-modern cheese, but I think B-tier is an appropriate placement, as it is an oversaturated genre, and not for everyone. Sometimes I feel I should try to listen to more of it, and it certainly is iconic. It's the Dragons and Rainbows type metal. It's also cool that despite being pure clean vocal metal, the instrumental portion goes just as hard as thrash or death metal at times. I get the appeal, but it's not my first choice. We all have our tastes. So far away, we wait for the day, yeah. Proto Metal This one is interesting. This genre is a little vague. It's metal before metal was a thing. These bands tend to be thought of as just broadly classic rock or hard rock, but it is different. More experimental than hard rock for sure. Very bluesy, with various elements of rock genres of the time, such as prog rock, folk rock, and psychedelic rock. This label tends to be applied to bands like Sir Lord Baltimore and Dust, which are hidden gems. But I also believe this style applies to some bands everyone has heard of, such as Led Zeppelin and Deep Purple. It's not quite hard rock like ACDC, and not quite proper metal like Black Sabbath. It's somewhere in between, with its own personality. Unfortunately, the style is just a 70s phenomenon, and is relegated to just a few obscure deep cuts, and a bunch of boomer radio hits that you are likely sick of hearing. So only B tier. But the deep cuts really do rock. I dig this style a lot. There's just very little of it, and it's not super metal. But you're still wondering why. Southern metal. When I'm going Southern metal is pretty fun. Not the best genre ever, but a little better than it's made out to be. It may sort of be the stock, tough redneck kind of music that's associated with wannabe cowboys and truck commercials, and it certainly doesn't help that in the 90s, Metallica ditched the awesome sound that they had in favor of a mediocre southern metal sound on Load and Reload, which everyone hated them for, and rightfully so. But despite this, there are actually some good tracks on those albums, and the band Down is a fantastic southern metal band. It shouldn't be dismissed so carelessly. Worthy B tier for sure. Give me fuel, give me fire, give me that which I desire. Stoner Rock. It's got to set so free. I sort of think of this genre as doom and roll. Caius is a great example. Or for something even your mom will know, I'd say that Chris Cornell's bands, Soundgarden and Audio Slave, are both pretty stoner rock influenced. As you can guess, with rock in the name, it's not the most metal genre out there, although it is often referred to as stoner metal as well. The only reason I'm not referring to it as stoner metal here is because there are actually two genres that get called stoner metal, so I wanted to reduce confusion as much as possible, which I probably just made it more confusing by doing this, but you know, whatever. However, despite having rock in its name, it is far from being the most contentious on this list, as far as being considered metal. I find this one really depends on my mood. Sometimes I can really vibe with stoner rock, other times I just find it dull. Pretty good stuff though. The most B-tier of the B-tier picks. Thal. Even to a metal genre autist such as myself, I thought the kids were just making up genres when I first heard of this one. Much like gent, thal is a made-up word. Both terms refer to the sounds that the guitars make in these styles. Thal is an offshoot of gent. You could even sort of think of it as post-gent if you really want to. It's slower and more atmospheric than gent, and somehow arguably even more dissonant. Viljarta is the definitive band. 
There are also fall core type bands like Spirit Box who take the style in a more metal core direction. This is a fairly new style, so we'll see how it evolves and if we get some awesome releases in the future, but to be honest, overall, it feels like a downgrade from Gent. It has its moments, but I haven't heard anything that's been as good or better than Meshuga or Periphery. As of writing this, Thal is only B tier. Viking Metal I don't have anything to say about this one, really. Bathory's Bloodfire Death sums it up. It's just black metal with a tinge of folk influence, really. My thoughts and feelings towards this genre are largely the same as they are towards regular black metal or ambient black metal. Solid B tier, but not much more to add. Bathory is pretty cool, but I can't say I can name very many Viking metal bands, so even if Bloodfire Death was the best album in the universe, it would still be a B tier genre. Brutal Death Metal This is my least favorite of all the death metal subgenres. It sounds like a muddled amalgamation of all the other death metal styles. And after some discussions online, I realized that all the brutal death metal bands that I like are actually hybrids of brutal death metal and technical death metal. And once I noticed this, I realized that I like brutal death metal even less than I originally thought. Tech death has complexity. Melodic death metal has soaring harmonies. Old school death metal can have a haunting atmosphere, and even deathcore and death and roll have an intensity to them. But brutal death metal just doesn't have much personality to it. I just don't get it. Doesn't do much for me. Mid death metal. C tier. <laughs> Crust punk is interesting. The idea of a metallic punk genre is a cool concept. And Crust can sound cool, especially when combined with black metal. Mmm, blackened crust. Delicious. But Crust Punk just smells bad. It's sort of like grindcore, but with a little more structure to it. It has the potential to be something cool, but rarely delivers. I think both Neo Crust and Entombed Core are much better variations on the sound. Crust is mid, sorry. I can already hear a white guy with dreadlocks calling me racist for this decision, but C tier for sure. Funeral Doom Metal <laughs> To be honest, I find Funeral Doom Metal kinda boring. I don't mean to seem heartless or anything. I understand it is all about grieving and mourning. That is a sensitive topic, and I do have a similar respect for it that I do towards depressive suicidal black metal. But whereas with DSBM I can empathize and relate to the pain and emotion portrayed through the music, with Funeral Doom Metal, it feels rather emotionless. Maybe that's the point. Maybe it is supposed to feel empty and emotionless as the result of the loss of someone, but it does not resonate with me for whatever reason, and I'm not even intrinsically opposed to the theme. I love the band Volen Fire. They have a similar theme, although they are more straight up death doom, not really funeral doom, which is much more somber and features funeral dirge music. I also think that this genre is a tad bit overindulgent when the songs are often 11 to 14 minutes long. A bit excessive in my opinion. It could be the case that this is a not for me genre, much like neoclassical metal. I tried getting into it, but I think I'll stick to plain old death doom. Maybe I just need to be in a particular mood for this genre, but C tier. <laughs> Glam metal. I'm sure that some are surprised that this isn't lower on the list, but I think calling it mid is fair. Glam metal is the main genre that you'll hear on the radio, even today, as the boomers seem to have cultural hegemony, and zoomers don't really listen to the radio anyways. It was quite possibly the most successful metal genre, broadly speaking, as it was essentially pop music in the 80s. Sleazy sex and drug innuendos galore to appeal to the youth, and cheesy ballads to appeal to women. Musically similar to the new wave of British heavy metal bands, but even less metal, as it has that glam rock influence. I don't really care for it, generally speaking, but I would be lying if I said I didn't like some Motley Crue and Rat tunes. Every single metal elitist would either put this in F tier or S tier, but I'm gonna split the difference. C tier. 
Grindcore. Let's be real, this genre is basically a meme. Haha, ha, it funny, song so short. But besides that gimmick, what does Grindcore even have going for it? It's basically death metal meets hardcore punk. Not to be confused with deathcore, of course. We wouldn't want this to be easy to understand or anything. But yeah, it has the intensity of death metal, but with a punk flair to it. I would say it is at least better than Crust, but my feelings towards both genres are ultimately similar. C tier. New German Hardness. It might be weird to include a genre with a specific country of origin in its name, but if the new wave of British heavy metal counts, then why not? This is Rammstein and the like. I don't think it specifically has to be a German band though. Something like Power Man 5000 fits the bill too. Although I will admit the grittiness of the German language certainly accentuates the style. Breaking down its parts, however, it is a combination of alt metal, industrial metal, groove metal, and techno. Metal you can dance to at a rave. It's okay, but not really my thing. Rammstein is cool though. Pop metal. It's the final countdown. This is often confused with glam metal, and they are very similar. Both are often lumped together under the vague term hair metal. However, pop metal is a bit more innocent. Ozzy Osbourne's solo career and Europe are some examples. Both glam metal and pop metal are radio-friendly 80s rock. However, pop metal lacks the sleaze and raunchy vibe of glam metal. Pop metal has a clean sound. Glam metal even sounds dirtier, even without hearing the lyrics about strippers and cocaine. I believe the Crazy Train meme sums up pop metal, the one where it shows how hard the beginning goes and how wimpy the rest is. I will also give pop metal a C-tier rank. Honestly, I might actually prefer glam metal, as that at least has a bit more grit to it. Pop metal is mid-tier radio material for sure. Post metal. This genre seems a bit pretentious to me if I'm honest. I can't really get into it. Add this to the list of genres with way too long songs that are really repetitive. It can possess a cool sound to it, mainly taking influence from post-rock and sludge metal. I may have misunderstood the genre somewhat initially, and my video on it might be my worst video. And I don't mean to sound like a complete meathead, but it mostly seems like it's too long, too boring, and too dissonant. I do love Agaloc, and perhaps I could give Post Metal another chance, but the style seems profoundly mid to me. Hard Rock Not a metal genre per se, but it just makes sense to include it on this list. Some do consider it metal, even if I don't. This is stuff like ACDC and KISS. It's not quite extreme enough to be metal, but its harder sound often makes people lump it in with other metal genres. To me, hard rock is in the same vein as the hair metal genres. It's fine, but that's all it is. Okay. I get that ACDC is classic, but I'm too much of a metal addict, so hard rock does not quite scratch that itch for me, if you know what I'm saying. Rock Rap metal. It's just one of those days where you don't wanna wake up. What can I say? Are you surprised that I didn't put this in D or F tier? Even I almost am. But I cannot be that harsh. Mid is fair enough. It is a little overhated. Not extremely overhated. Not greatly overhated. But a little bit overhated. I keep seeing things online calling Results May Vary by Limp Bizkit the worst album of all time. And yet, I don't even think that's the worst Limp Bizkit album. There are some solid tracks on it. I never thought I'd get to a point in my life where I felt the need to defend Limp Bizkit, but they do have some bangers. So it is not the worst genre ever. But overall, yeah, rap metal is pretty mid. Most of it is forgettable and skippable. C tier. Slam Death Metal. <laughs> Slam death metal, or simply slam, is very similar to brutal death metal, except it focuses on the breakdown sections, also known as the slams. It also features vocals that are strange even for death metal. Frog squeals, pig squeals, brie vocals, what have you. 
The vocals are largely just treated as another instrument, and the genre is focused on riffs. It's one giant breakdown. It all sounds the same, and the lyrics are the absolute worst metal has to offer. Grotesque, violent, and sexual imagery. And purposefully, distasteful. I get that it's supposed to be over the top and a bit humorous, but I think only edgy teenagers find this stuff super funny. I guess that I like Slam a bit more than Brutal Death Metal at least, as it has its own distinct personality. It pains me to have to give Slam a C tier rank, as it has a cool sound, but it does absolutely nothing with it. Through research, I discovered that all these Slam bands that I thought I really liked were really either Deathcore, Gore Grind, Death Grind, or Brutal Death Metal, or some combination of these. And looking into pure Slam, I realized that the genre is kind of garbage. Garbage. Correct me if I'm wrong, but Slam is just a cool noise that has yet to be music. C tier. Would be lower if the noise wasn't so cool. Speed Metal Speed Metal is a bit overrated. Motorhead is classic, but the rest is meh. Most of speed metal also takes influence from the new wave of British heavy metal sound, and it all just blurs together as forgettable 80s metal. Speed metal is the missing link between the new wave of British heavy metal sound and thrash metal. Personally, I'd rather just listen to those styles and not bother with speed metal. Unless you are a biker or obsessed with the 80s, there's no real reason to go out of your way to listen to this stuff. C tier. Stoner Doom Metal is distinct from Stoner Rock. Though both are often referred to as simply Stoner Metal. It's a bassy, bluesy, doom metal riff focused style. Electric Wizard does this style the greatest, and they are awesome, but they are very sludge metal inspired. The vast majority of Stoner Doom bands don't have that edge to them, and I find them a bit dull. Stoner Doom isn't my cup of tea. Another boring, long song genre. C tier. Next. <laughs> Trance Metal This is anime opening theme song metal. Poppy dance electronic metal. Amaranth is a good example. It often takes influence from power metal, melodic death metal, and melodic metalcore. Some of it is pretty solid, but overall it is pretty mid to me. I'd rather just listen to actual melodic metal, or better electronic metal, like industrial metal or even metal step. So, C tier. War Metal Blasphemy is goaded. War Metal is basically death metal, black metal, and grindcore all blended together. It is quite possibly the evilest sounding metal genre. Besides the goat, however, this is the most samey genre of samey genres. Even the album arts are identical between different bands. War Metal bands don't even pretend to be anything other than Blasphemy clones, and they all end up sounding like Slam meets Venom's black metal album. Mid. C tier. Done. Avant-garde metal. I like some of this stuff, like Unexpect, but as a whole, this style is awful. Uncategorizable noise gets tossed into this trash bin of a category. This is essentially metal's other category, and most bands that fall under this label are pretty terrible. I cannot even call it mid, since the average avant-garde metal track is just unpleasant to listen to. D tier, no doubt. Beatdown Hardcore This is a mix of metallic hardcore, rap metal, and brutal death metal. For the most part, I cannot listen to this. It gives off the most try-hard vibes ever. Wanna be tough guy genre. Kinda just cringe, honestly. D tier. Pretty lame. Beatdown is down bad. SAPD's most wanted! Public enemy number one! Black and Roll. 
This style is conceptually bad. I hate to say it, since I love death and roll, but mixing black metal and hard rock just doesn't work. It detracts from the strengths of both styles. Hard rock has a crunch and uplifting vibe, and black metal has a visceral atmosphere. Trying to do both together at the same time just feels off. It's far too dull for metal and roll, but sounds too much like rock music to have an atmosphere. I do like Satyricon and their take on black and roll, but as a genre of metal as a whole, it just falls flat. D tier. Crossover Thrash This is essentially a combination of thrash metal and punk rock. I've never cared for this style. This is stuff like Suicidal Tendencies, DRI, and I'd even argue Anthrax. This always seemed to me like a lamer version of thrash metal. As much as I love thrash, it is already an oversaturated genre as is, so I really don't need an inferior punkish variant. I'm sure that some love it and find it a fun offshoot, and to each their own, but I can do without it. D tier. Cyber Grind. What? The hell is this? D tier. Drone metal. Appropriate name. This is a nothing genre for the most part. If you like listening to 12 minutes of static, this is the style for you. I get that it's meant for atmosphere, and it can sometimes achieve this, but I think even if you like drone metal, you can understand why I would give it a D tier. Unless you need background noise for a haunted house on Halloween, this is a hard pass for me. This is as minimalist as music gets. Next. Electronic Core. Also known as Crab Core, this is the meme genre of the guys with emover haircuts and v neck t shirts bobbing up and down in crab poses. Electronic Core takes everything good about melodic metalcore and makes it so much gayer with auto tune and electronic beats. This offshoot may be solely responsible for metalcore's terrible reputation. These are just boy bands with a couple of breakdowns thrown in to make it seem metal. As open minded as I am, I got a gatekeep somewhere here. Even when I was a teenager who enjoyed melodic metalcore, these electronic core bands always disgusted me. And despite the fact that the style is barely over a decade old, it has somehow aged poorer than glam metal. Don't mistake electronic core for melodic metalcore. It's amazing how different the vibes of these two genres are, despite their superficial similarities. I listen to melodic metalcore, you listen to electronic core. We are not the same. D tier. Kawaii metal. What am I even supposed to say to this? It's heavily pop infused metal for weebs. Haven't listened to much of it, and honestly have no good reason to. Even just a peripheral glance at kawaii metal basically tells me all I need to know about it. That said, Poppy has some kawaii metal-ish stuff, so that at least saves it from F tier. I gotta give it a D tier. LOL's So Random Core. This is a term I use to describe bands like I Wrestle the Bear Ones. Mostly a mix of mathcore, deathcore, and avant-garde metal. I will say on average, I prefer this over avant-garde metal in general, as it has humor to it and self-awareness. But it being a joke doesn't really excuse it being garbage. Alt metal and funk metal can be funny, yet still good to listen to. This is something I'd only listen to if I was really bored with other metal. Also, I apologize for lumping in between the buried in me with this sound, as they are more deathcore meets prog metal. It was disingenuous of me to call them a lol so random core band. It's only on the album Colors that they lean into the style. But yeah, not a great sound. I imagine that this is what metal sounds like to people that don't like metal. Post grunge. Life hasn't turned out quite the way I want it to be. This is more of a hard rock subgenre. 
but I thought I might as well be thorough with this list. Post grunge is the likes of Nickelback, Three Doors Down, and Foo Fighters. Post grunge takes all the cool aspects of grunge and washes them away, leaving a cleaner, sterile sound that is really generic and boring. If I were to steel man this style, I'd advocate for the bands who blend it with alt metal, like Seether or Three Days Grace, or bring up Stone Temple Pilots, who I consider to be on the cusp between regular grunge and post-grunge. But overall, I hate this style. It is simply butt rock. The king of D-tier. My apologies to its many fans. Trap metal. I noticed that my video on this style got a lot of ire. Perhaps people thought I was saying it was a 10 out of 10 genre or something. But I was not kidding when I said I was steel manning the genre, because I really don't care for it. I am 100% putting it in D tier. The vast majority of trap metal is awful. I do enjoy Kim Dracula and a couple others, but for the most part, this genre is a toxic waste dump. Not to mention, this is the most contentious genre to include on the list. Putting hard rock and grunge on this list is debatable, but at the very least there are heavy electric guitars in those styles. Trap metal is often just screaming over a trap beat. I think it's interesting that in the 2020s, the genre lines are getting so dissolved that even the most open-minded of us are forced into gatekeeping, or at the very least wondering what makes metal, well, metal, to begin with. There is some interesting trap metal though. Gizmo goes full on death metal vocals and is pretty menacing, but I highly doubt this style will stand the test of time, minus a few standouts. Hard D tier. Crunk Core. If you can believe it, this is like a worse version of trap metal. It is early 2000s pop rap music with emo screaming in it, and it has excessive auto-tune without the humor or self-awareness that hyperpop has. This is the worst thing that millennials unleashed on us, and it makes Linkin Park look like Slipknot. Crunk Core is bands like Broken Side, Blood on the Dance Floor, and if you wanted to absolutely steel man the genre, I suppose that Hollywood Undead is the least bad. But this is F-tier metal, if you can even call it metal. Hard F-tier. Porno Grind. Even by name alone, this is clear F tier. I can already hear people objecting to both gore grind and porno grind being genres at all, as it can appear that it's all just grindcore but with different lyrical themes. But gore grind is more death metal influence than grindcore, and porno grind is like gore grind but with more punk influence. It does have its own sound, even outside the lyrical theme. Trust me, this somehow makes sense. It just works. Porno grind has a disgusting sound, much like gore grind, except without the cool factor. And the lyrics are obviously extremely gross and sexual for laughs, but unlike slam death metal, it doesn't have a cool sound to compensate for this. Porno grind as a genre itself is just taking the piss, but it's still abysmal, so definitive F tier genre. So that concludes my tier list. I'll show you the results here now. Thank you for watching. Feel free to disagree with me, I know everyone will. Voice your opinions in the comments below, just be civil. If you watch this entire video all the way through, I appreciate that. Our acculturation continues, even as we conclude, metals, overcomplicated genres.